Welcome back. This is our fourth and final episode. Today's morning started off wet at around 2 a.m. We were getting pelted with rain, but it was the weirdest thing. It was one cloud and it happened to dump right on top of us. Everywhere else was completely dry. Since today was our last day, we packed most everything up. It's around 6.15 in the morning and for breakfast we had PBJ sandwiches and ceviche. This morning we had a negative tide so as usual we hooked up the boat to the back of the car and dragged it to the water. As regards to content, everything was on its last leg. Baja really puts a test on your belongings. Two of my three batteries for my GoPro had overheated and caught on fire. My cell phone had broke with cracks up and down the screen and my nicer camera did not go out with us this trip. With that being said, enjoy the action. So, little update, we're about 14 miles, about 14 miles out from land right now. We are making our way out to the Yellowtail and Grouper Grounds. Um, I'm out here on Fernando's Little Inflatable. We're making our way out. After a brutal, bouncy hour and a half mob out to the Golden Reef, we had finally made it. This point, I decided to fly the drone before it got windy as forecasted later in the day. While the drone was in the air, Rodrigo, the owner of the sport fishing vessel, was telling us epic stories of his previous clients catching massive grouper, yellowtail, snapper, and other fantastic species. Wow. Oh man, it's not levels like that, man. Mark, mark this spot. Rodrigo knows this spot like the back of his hand. He kept putting the boat directly on the spot and his clients would hook up immediately each drop. The water was so blue, you could easily mistake in it for Gatorade. After a few minutes had passed, more boats from different angles slowly moved in. Some boats were set up strictly trolling, while others were set up dropping to the bottom for cast and retrieve. In this clip, I made the exposure settings high as you would not be able to see the fish coming up. Unlike fishing certain spots in California, all the locals were super friendly and informative at the spots we were at. Three of the eight boats that were out there had waved us, signaling to come join them on their spot. Some of these fishermen were dropping down full bonita, and in return they pulled up grouper and giant red snapper. While others, like ourselves, threw out jigs and trolled, pulling in yellowtail and Sierra mackerel. After I took a few more photos, Roberto had yelled something in Spanish, which translated to look behind you. And as we did, we saw a swarm of yellowtail busting up on the surface. I landed the drone immediately and began to record the excitement. Yellowtail. <laughs> Careful, man. Oh, look at that, look at that. Where they at? Where they at? Where they at? Straight in front of you. What do you mean where they're at? Dang, that's a huge snapper. See? All right, Fernando's hooked up at the Golden Reef. Big yellow, big yellow, big yellow. You see it already? Yeah. Damn. You want this one? Yeah. Nice job. Now I want a yellow tail. Damn. Yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Inflatable boat style. First drop. First drop. Lucky duck. Yo yo, Taddy 4L heavy iron. Yeah, chrome and blue. But 
that glow back. Woo! Dude was working me good. Oh, dude, that is nice. Nice fish. All right. Yeah. Fish of the trip so far. <laughs> Screw you. I still gotta get mine, like you said. Let's just get the drink. Slide everything up. Keep it up on the bag. your bag, huh? I've had a yellowtail in the bag before. Not that big, motherfucker. Yeah, it was that big. Oh, I'll, just, I'll show you a photo. Probably wasn't your yellowtail. No, it wasn't, but. <laughs> <laughs> You guys are at Papa Fernandez, right? Yeah, I heard you guys on the radio. You guys got it all squared away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we were sitting up there on the troll and then on the surface fire. Surface fire. All in this area right here? Yeah, right here. This is our first, dude, this is my second time here, but my first time to the reef here. Uh, I didn't, we, we didn't know how far it was. So I just break off and thinking Fernando hooks <laughs> up. There he is. It's a red snapper. <laughs> Dumping line. Nice. Yeah. Like Yeah. Oh, Mr. Professional Sam Grass Grouper thing over here. <laughs> Sam Bass Grouper thing, just like I said. Whoa! Amazing! <laughs> just a jig for comparison. <laughs> With anything, all fun things must come to an end. We had about a brutal two hour ride back home. The wind had picked up as forecasted and Fernando and I were getting brutally abused. Not even kidding. We were getting smacked around in the chop, making jokes about whether the trek was worth the beating. <laughs> So we're making our way back in. We just did a 21 mile run one way out to the Golden Reef. Uh, we are now making our way back in. We've been driving for about an hour and a half. We still got, still got another 20 minutes. We had finally made it back to the cove and the wind was very hot. It was 1 p.m., the weather was showing 108 degrees. Cleaning fish and packing up was a challenge due to the temperatures and both of us were completely wiped. When we were out at the reef, we had left about 45 minutes prior to Roberto leaving and of course with his 150 horsepower outboard, they beat us back home. As they got to loading their boat back on the trailer, we got started fish filleting and packing up.
<laughs> what happened, buddy? <laughs> yeah, eat him alive. Gosh. Damn it. Before leaving camp, we got ourselves some pina coladas and manta ray tacos, which were absolutely delicious. After we said our goodbyes, we were back on the road. Minus a few casualties, this was an epic trip. We both learned a lot, we shared some laughs, and we definitely look forward to our next outing. This trip cost me a total of $650. 150 of that was spent on water, food, and camping supplies. The other 500 went towards the campsite and our fuel for both the vehicle and outboards. Because this was my first time here and I didn't know what to expect, I overpacked a lot. Half the food we brought, we hardly even ate. We mainly survived off of peanuts, water, beer, fish that we had caught, and PBJ sandwiches. We brought soups and other non-refrigerated projects that were hardly touched during the trip. Even though we've been back for only five weeks, both of us have been talking about making another excursion back down there in the future. Some things we would like to do next time is plan to stay longer, that way we can have rest days where we could go snorkeling if it's too windy and explore other places further down the road. This was the fourth and final episode of this trip. I'm glad you enjoyed and I will see you in the next adventure.